Good evening, everybody. Alan Slaughterzinski, 321 Sportscast, here on yet another Coach's Corner edition, one-on-one. -on -one. And so far, we've kind of stayed with uh, the big boys, the high schools and the, the big girls, uh, getting coaches and athletic directors on. But, you know, it all starts at the youth level, and our little peeps and our future stars all play a big role in what happens here on 321 Sportscast, and arguably nobody better in the community to discuss the role of athletes at a young age than this gentleman sitting to my left. He is John Wallace. He is the director of the Satellite Beach Seahawks Youth Football Program. John, welcome to the set of 321 Sportscast. Thanks, Alan. Great to be here. I appreciate you uh, bringing me in. The first thing I want to say is this. When you come to the 321 Sportscast studios, learn from John Wallace. The swag that John has brought with him tonight is just second to nobody in town. The blanket, Gina, the lovely Gina got a beautiful shirt. I'm telling you, this is how you do it right here. So beautiful stuff. And, of course, this will be the first and likely only since it's the first, we don't have a lot of space left, only Pop Warner jersey hanging on the 321 Sportscast studio walls. Well, John, tell us before we get started, tell us a little bit about you. Well, I'm the, uh, the commissioner of the Satellite Beach Seahawks Pop Warner cheer, uh, tackle and cheer football. It's a mouthful, uh, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, I also sit on the, the board for the South Beach Youth Football Cheer Association, which oversees uh, both Pop Warner and NFL flags. So gotcha. we have, uh, we've got about 500 kids in our organization over in Satellite Beach and the surrounding areas. So I sit on the board with about 16 other people that help make what I do look easy and awesome. And it's only because I've, I've got a huge team around me that, that helped me get that done. You know, beach football is, and I call it beach football because it is, it's unique in the community aspect over across the causeways in the way that everybody um, is like a big family over there. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we're, we're such a unique little community, uh, you know, with the, with the bridges kind of keeping us, you know, contained in this little world that we live in. And uh, it's a great place. Uh, you know, a lot of our kids walk and ride their bikes to practice. Um, you know, it's, it's a, uh, a bunch of small feeder elementary schools that mm -hmm. are spaced out across the beach side, which is very unique. Uh, most kids walk and bike to their schools, and then they feed into the two junior high schools that we have on the beach. So, you know, that's the, uh, that's the, the world that we kind of live in is those elementary schools and those two junior uh, middle schools that we that our kids are, are a part of. So we're a big part of uh, like five different elementary schools and two uh, really cool uh, middle schools that we uh, that we're a part of. And, you know, all these families, we all see each other. We see each other at the grocery store and out of restaurants and yep. everything. So it's just a really it's just an awesome place to, to live and raise your kids and you know, have an organization like the Seahawks be over there and be a part of it. It's just, you know, pretty awesome. And Pop Warner is, uh, you know, I played Pop Warner. And a lot of you played Pop Warner. It's been around uh, forever. And Pop Warner to me was always one of, you know, Pop Warner and Little League. Uh, the two, you know, the two leagues growing up that I think a lot of kids, you know, to get that start on life. I guess the word I'm looking for is lessons. Yeah. Uh, Pop Warner and Little League are where it's at. Yeah, that's, you know, this is where you have the opportunity to start working with these kids and develop them as, uh, you know, future members of the community. Right. Uh, they're, they're in school, so you've got to work with them to understand the commitment that it takes to be a, a youth, uh, a, a scholar athlete. And that's one of the big reasons why we went to Pop Warner. Pop Warner, we felt... Uh, did a better job at recognizing the scholar athlete. Uh, there's a big emphasis um, on yep. your grades. You have to, the kids in Pop Warner have to turn the report card in from last year. And the, the kids that did very well are recognized, and the kids that are struggling are recognized and well, and our coaches know where our kids are because their report card is in their book that we, uh, that we put together for each team. And, the, and our coaches are encouraged to work with the kids and talk to the kids about their grades and about schoolwork and so, you know, one of the big reasons why we, we went to Pop Warner last year was because of that scholastic uh, connection that they have. And, of course, when you get into high school, you know, we were talking to Mark Karstens last week, and academically speaking, you know, high schools and athletic directors, 
uh, as they begin to cycle through, at least here in Brevard County, they want everyone to be NCAA Division I qualified, recruitable. Doesn't mean you're going to play NCAA Division I or be walk on the field uh, and play an NCAA Division I sport. But look, if you're recruitable, that means academically you've, you've hit the threshold. Right, and so we're, we feel that the conditioning of the kids to say, listen, your grades are vitally important. There's a connection between your grades and you as a youth athlete. I think that when you help the kids along from a very young child at you know kindergarten, first grade, and then you know you can't wait until a kid gets to high school and say, hey, listen, your grades are really important. You got to start. You know, if they don't have that foundation, and we feel that, like I said, that, that's why we feel that Pop Warner is so special, is because it affords that um, that conditioning, that expectation that these kids understand that they have to that grades are important and grades are connected with their uh, with their ability to play sports and so there's nothing more discouraging to see a kid who does have athletic ability and that they can't get to a nice school right because their grades are are less than you know less than adequate so that's just a shame and we've seen that unfortunately here in brevard county on several occasions and we've seen it recently as well we're here with john wallace from the satellite beach seahawks and cheer uh youth football pop warner program and john you know i find youth coaches to be unique and special and high school coaches i love you college coaches i love you but you don't have to deal with nearly as much as youth coaches do because there is the one element that high school coaches can leave out of the equation that college coaches most definitely leave out of the equation and that is you also have to deal with parents yeah. and the politics of that and that can be very difficult at times well, what is sort of your philosophy on that well, I think that um, having been a youth uh, coach for quite a few years now, um, having been in the position on the board that I hold, you know, I've had to, um, I've had to interact and deal with parents for a number of years. Um, I find that the most important aspects that you can do for your organization in regards to parents is you've got you've to set the level of expectation for your parents. You've got to set that level of expectation through your coaches. And the coaches have to do their best to deliver on what they've, they've you know, they, what they've put out. So, you know, if a coach is saying, listen, our goal is to be developmental and we're going to put the, the wins off to the side this season, but we're going to be developmental. Well, the coach has to go out there and be developmental. They can't go out there and try to win at all costs and right. leave kids on the sidelines because the parents, I think, are very in tune to what's going on. Right. And so if your message matches what you're actually doing out on the football field, I think you're fine. I think what happens with parents and the expectations of parents is when, when the coach or the league as a whole says, hey, listen, this is what we want to do, but then what the end product is doesn't match that. I think that's where the frustration from the parents comes in. Um, I also think that a lot of times, um, you know, what we've done to try to improve over the years is we try to make sure that we're listening to the parents. So we do preseason parent meeting, midseason parent meeting, uh, preseason survey, midseason survey. We're always trying to find ways to communicate with our parents um, so that we can offer them the opportunity to, to give us feedback on how we're doing, ways that we can improve. And I think a lot of times parents want to be, they want to be heard. Right. And, and so I think that if you'll listen and you'll pay attention and you'll communicate and have some integrity within your organization, you tend to have less problems with your parents. My goodness, I think that's a fantastic answer. And uh, John, let's talk about, about your kids and and about your program over there because i i've noticed over the last couple of years how much of a tie-in you really want between what you're developing for the seahawks and what they're doing at say satellite beach yeah. uh for the scorpions talk a little bit about your program and and how or even if it ties into what's happening at the big school well i can tell you this much uh you mentioned mark Carstens. he was our former uh coach at satellite high school before coach kimmy um, you know, he and I met when I first became president of the board. Uh, he's one of the first people that I reached out to. Mm -hmm. And I, we had breakfast and Coach Kimmy was the assistant at the time. And we had breakfast together. And, uh, you know, one of the first things we pointed out was is that the relationship between the Seahawks and the high school was not good. Right. And it needed help to improve. And I think the situation with, with satellite scorpion tackle football was at a point where they were, you know, having trouble. Right. So we all sat down, the three of us sat down, had breakfast together and said, we're going to put our heads together and figure out a way to improve the relationship between these two programs. 
and it started at breakfast, and it's it's blossomed from there. Yeah. You know, Coach Kimmy and I, uh, Coach Carson, I still t- stay in touch with each other. He's, he's an awesome individual, and he was such a big help. Um, you know, before he went to Coco for the uh, athletic director position, but he left the program in such good hands with Coach Kimmy, and that so that Coach was able to hit the ground running. But he and I, I think, speak on at least a, you know, every couple of days we're texting back and forth. But it's it's all about communicating the message, and the message is this: we, uh, as both of our organizations, these are the things that we're trying to do. We're we're passionate about football. Mm-hmm. We are we are passionate about the game and about football. And but what's important is what is our purpose. So when you talk to Coach Kimmy, he'll tell you it's it's passion and purpose. So our, we're passionate. We're all hyped up. Everybody's excited. We're going to have a good time. But what is our purpose? And our purpose is to make sure that we're taking care of our kids. Mm-hmm. We're taking care of our kids to make sure that those kids are are physically taken care of and that they're emotionally taken care of. Because these are kids. At the end of the day, if, if we're doing anything, we're doing all of this as an effort to benefit these kids and give them the opportunity to, to grow into, you know, uh, members of the community that are going to be leaders of tomorrow. And so in order to be able to do that, you've got to be ready for them to fill their emotional tanks on a daily basis. So how we as an organization accomplish that is very simple. The board fills the emotional tank for the coaches. The coaches fill the emotional tank for the kids. And then we all sort of support each other and stay in that relationship to where we're all working together to try to help each other out. You know, when Coach Kimmy's walking around doing, uh, during pregame warmups, uh, before games and before practices, he walks around to each and every kid, touches each and every kid, and this is what he says to him: I got your back, you got mine? And so that kind of attitude is, I feel like, I know for a fact, Coach Kimmy's got my back. You know, we have a, we have a meeting next week to where two nights next week for a couple hours, our Seahawk coaches are going to sit with the Satellite Beach Scorpion coaches for like two and a half hours on Monday and Tuesday night to just go over plans, to go over, uh, you know, their season and how to get themselves prepared. I mean, you can't, you just, you can't ask for more. No, you can't. And that just proves, that's proof of, what it means when you tell somebody you've got their back. Yeah, there is. I mean, you can tell when you when you know you can tell when you go to some of the youth programs in this area, and I mean, you can tell that there is an elephant in the room that's not being dealt with. You can tell there's discord among members, coaches, whatever. But the feeling that I always genuinely get from Satellite Beach, from the Satellite Beach Seahawks to the Satellite Scorpions, is is harmony and development and emotional and skill development, which I think is big. The big question um, is how do you guys collectively stop the, the invasion of the land schools taking quality kids that you've developed that need to be playing at Satellite Beach or need to be playing at Cocoa High School? How do you stop that invasion? I think you stop that um, by making your program so attractive. Your, your, your program is so attractive to the parent that they wouldn't want to go anyplace else. That it's, it's you know, you're never going to stop the recruiting that goes on. You're never going to stop nope. people saying, hey, listen, come on over here. You know, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do that. I mean, that goes on at the youth level. Right. Right. So you, you can never really stop that. So uh, the big thing that, that Coach and I talk about a lot is uh, controlling the controllables. Right. So I can't control what another program does across the bridge. They want to come recruit. I, I can't really stop that. What I can control is the quality of my program and the quality of the people in our program and have that program be attractive, so attractive that there's no way they'd want to leave. That's, that's, our, that's our purpose and that's our goal is to try to make that happen. And you see that, and you see it from the uniforms, because it all matters. It all matters to the yeah. parent. It matters to the player. You know, every little detail you know, it, we, we focus on three big things. Uh, yeah, um, what is it? Safety, uh, safety, scholarship, and sportsmanship. Those are the three big things that we focus on. Let's talk about scholarship. Safety okay. is pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. So we talked about scholarship before, um, you know, making sure that our kids understand the value and the importance of what they do in the classroom. That it's, it's one thing to go out there and do amazing things out on the football field. We're, we're encouraging that. We're, we're passionate about that. But your, your purpose as a youth athlete is to be a student. 
and to get your butt in the classroom. That's why it's called a student athlete. Right, and, and to get all that stuff done. So that we encourage and we hold them accountable for their grades. They've got to turn their grades in, and uh, they've got to work hard to maintain them and, and get them Is there, there a minimum? Yeah, they have to have a uh, – just like the high school, they've got to have the 2.0 Love it. grade point average to be able to play. Uh, if a kid doesn't have the adequate grades, that doesn't mean they can't play initially, but they've got to show progress. So those kids that are below the 2.0, we'll put them what's called a progress report, uh -huh. and they'll have to get reports from their uh, teachers that say, hey, listen, he's putting forth, he or she's putting forth the effort, and then that progress report goes into their And that's their accountability as well. Absolutely. So you talk about the scholarship. What was the third aspect? Uh, sportsmanship. So, yeah. you know, our, our core principles – is our Champions for Life program. Yeah. Uh, what this Champions for Life program talks about, and this was put together years ago by a board that uh, going back about eight, ten years ago, just some amazing people involved in the process that put this together. I'm so grateful for them for what they did. But it's called Champions for Life. And basically what Champions for Life is, is that the life part of it stands for leadership, integrity, fortitude, and effort. Okay? Um, you, you can't go wrong by trying to instill these core principles in, in children as they are developing and growing into young adults and into adults. I mean, if you're an employer out there, if you are a college out there, and you're looking for kids to, to bring to your organization to make your organization better, if, if we brought somebody to you that said, hey, listen, they, they are big on leadership, they have integrity, they know what fortitude looks like, and they'll give you every bit of effort that you could possibly ask from them. Who wouldn't want that kind of person? Yeah, and it and, and sounds like to me that this is also another tool for making sure that you're able to continue to keep these kids and build this program. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, so these kids that are leaving our program and going to high school, man, you, you saw last year they had an amazing JV team. Like yeah. Satellite High School. Numbers are way up. So the numbers are up, uh, but the, the effort. Just the effort. Those kids out there at practice, just out there, just working their tails off, both on the field and off the field in the classroom and around the school, just representing, you know, the JV football team in the school. That's why this year you had so many more kids come out for spring football. We had almost 100 kids out there wow. for spring football, which is, you know, what is it this? Amazing. What is it this platform can do? The three, two, one Sportscast platform, in terms of being able to ask the community and say, hey, you know what? We need your help doing this. What can the Satellite Beach, what can the beach community do to help your program? I appreciate this, Alan. So here's what, here's what the community can do. There's two things, all right? Number one, we want the community to know that the kids' safety and well-being is, is of vital importance to us as the board and the coaches for these kids. You know, there's a lot of media that we sort of have to push back against sure because tackle football gets such a bad name you know and what i want to tell you is that you know but doing this tackle football youth tackle football for quite some time um you know the the injuries related to tackle football that you see in the media compared to what actually happens is is quite a stark contrast yeah. right but you know we're putting you know we put a lot of emphasis on the training of our coaches and what they do out there, the equipment that we buy. I didn't bring one of my helmets because you know why? They're all out being reconditioned because every single year, we're required to recondition our helmet every two years. We do it every year. So right now, every single Seahawk helmet is at Rydell being reconditioned right now. So the other thing I think that the community can do is understand this, and I'll just, just give you like a little anecdote, all right? We had a guy, this kid came out and played football with us. Um, we, they had a tough year. They had, a, you know, like 13, 14 kids ended up at the end of that season. It's a tough way to play 11 on 11. Football. Yeah. So when we, when we reached out to the kid the following year to come back, the coach was a little, the guy, you know, he was a little hesitant, all right? The dad was a little hesitant about coming back. We got him to come back. We had a very successful season. He ended up helping his coach. Just want you to understand, this guy was a military guy living on base housing. He retired last year, or he's getting ready to retire, and he purchased a home in Indian Harbor Beach. So when you look at the value of youth sports in a community, as you are a business out there in the community, <laughs> yeah. as you, you are uh, you know, one of the leaders and the movers and shakers in the community, understand that youth sports have a huge value to the market economy where they live and where they exist. That's why it's important for sponsors to come out and sponsor youth sports because right. your return on investment is huge 
It's just, it's just completely. It's, ir it's immeasurable. It's immeasurable. Yeah. The amount of support that you're going to get for your 250 bucks for the banner, your $500. Right. You know, your score. Like, we got a scoreboard going up. I brought this with me tonight. This isn't the final rendition, but Kendall Signs, a local. Yeah. You know, we, we got, listen, we got offers for signs from all over the United States. Kendall Signs was not the cheapest, okay? Kendall Signs is right here, uh, just up the road local in Rockledge. Company, yeah. Uh, they're a local business. They're, they're local families that own Kendall Signs, that work for Kendall Signs. They're going to be putting our new sign up. We've got our sponsors that are going up on that sign. Uh, Dr. Schumacher, um, uh, American uh, Air of uh, Brevard. Um, I forget the other sponsors right off the top of my head, but, you know, local sponsors that people are going to see on that scoreboard yeah. every time they go out to that field at Satellite Beach. Um, these things are important. And so those are the two things, you know, just – just pay attention to the fact that, you know, I think a lot of things that are, that are talked about uh, as negative aspects of the safety of tackle football, I think, are maybe a little bit overblown. I agree. Um, and I think that as business owners and, and leaders in the community, I think it's, it's worth your while to offer support to any youth sports. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm a big supporter of community and youth sports, and I'm not just a supporter of – Satellite Beach Seahawks. I happen to be a part of the Satellite Beach Seahawks, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a supporter of any youth program yes, she is. that's out there in our community. So I work hard to maintain good working relationships with all the presidents of all the leagues that, that are in and around Brevard and, and Indian River County and Volusia County. And John is all over the place watching, you know, when we do Little League games, you know, broadcast Little League games and, and, and high school football. John is constantly watching everything that goes on. Uh, in and around the community. So as we close up here, what haven't we discussed that we need to make sure we talk about when it comes to your football program? So right now we're in registration. Okay. It's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, we've got registration open for both our Pop Warner tackle and cheer. Information on the screen. Yep. So any any kids that can uh, that can come out and play with us for tackle, for Pop Warner, and for cheer, we'd love to have you come out and join us. Registration is going to close soon. I think we close registration this Saturday on June 15th. Uh, we also have our NFL flag, okay. which is ages uh, 5 to 17, um, that we offer over in Satellite Beach. All the games are home, no travel, Friday night or Friday evening games uh, before you go over to the Satellite High School football game on Friday night. You can come out and play NFL flag football from about 5.45 to about 6.30. Wrap it up. Go have dinner over at uh, Satellite High School for your, uh, for your tackle football you know, nourishment, right? But the, that, the, that registration is going on right now as well. So we, we have both Pop Warner Tackle and Cheer and NFL Flag Football. And do they both close this Saturday? No, uh, NFL Flag registration is open a little bit further into the end of June. Okay, good. That will probably, uh, because by the time this airs, the, the, your registration will be closed for okay. the 15th. Yeah, so that's all right. But get on the NFL Flag Football, and you can check. Uh, we'll put something up on our Facebook page. Uh, between now and Saturday for the rest. So what can we expect to see competition-wise? What, what kind of group you got returning next year? So we have, uh, I would say, our top age teams, um, our 14U, our 12U, and our 10U tackle Pop Warner football teams um, are going to be highly successful. They, all of our teams have, um, I would say, amazing coaching staffs, mm -hmm. all right? with some pretty awesome kids, all right? So I, I look to them to do quite well in the Pop Warner arena. I also think that our cheer teams um, are gonna do, you know, they, they all, almost all of them went past the uh, local competition and went to regional. Um, they're gonna do fantastic. And I think if you're, you know, if you're interested in watching some pretty just awesome stuff, come out on a Friday night starting September 6th, I think, is when the NFL flag season starts. If you want to see some pretty awesome football, come out and watch that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have about 12 football fields going at the same time with kids playing NFL flag football. So you just you can't beat it. And once we get this scoreboard taken care of, I'm going to reach out to the community here and let you know that we would love to be able to broadcast Satellite Beach Seahawk games. So step up, right? I mean, step up because Absolutely. grandparents and aunts and uncles and even parents, you mentioned military parents, uh, around the country want an opportunity to see uh, their, you know, their, their grandchildren or nieces or whatever play play for, or uh, nephews play football so step up to the plate support the satellite beach seahawks and make sure you're doing your part as a business owner in the community 
to take care of your own. John, I, I can't thank you enough for coming in studio. I can't thank you enough for the great stuff. You look good in red. Uh, I tell you what, tell you, I, 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 uh, I really like it. Uh, appreciate you, man. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Yes, sir. For John Wallace of the Satellite Beach Seahawks, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. You've been watching Coach's Corner here on 321 Sportscast.